do, do, do all these things and make, do, do it a certain way when it really is just as simple as your beliefs are creating your reality and joy is the way to go all the time. It's really that simple. If you want to manifest something, all you have to do really is think about that thing and find the script that you can create in your mind that brings you joy and happiness and excitement and do that as much as possible. It's daydreaming. You have to feel the feeling. Yes. You're not feeling it so you're not gonna attract it. The moment that you feel the joy of the thing, that's when the universe says, I'm bringing that thing into their reality because the universe doesn't know that you don't already have it the universe only knows that feeling of joy. So the law is if you feel that feeling of joy, the universe has to bring it to your reality because the universe is joy and love and excitement. When I was a kid, people used to tell me to stop daydreaming so much. And I kind of <laughs> was like, F off because yeah. this makes me feel good. You can easily get caught up in focusing on what you don't want. So as soon as you realize this is a situation that I don't want, switch your thoughts to what you do want only, only. For despite what we have learned, infinitely more that we do not know. So let us tune out frequency. Until new vibrations grow. Let's pretend that it never ends. And now, it's time to start the show. So like you have a desire for something. Like I'm watching this prison show about these little girls. It's called Girls Incarcerated. It's on Netflix. And I watch as, you know, I, cr I could cry through this whole thing because I'm watching these girls, 17, 15 to 17 years old, struggling with being on the streets, drugs, you know, all these things that they're doing that are awful and got them locked up, obviously. And I'm sitting there crying <laughs> every episode because I feel so sad and compassionate towards these girls. And all I can think about is when I get my yoga teacher certification, I want to go into some of these facilities and teach them yoga because I'm just watching them suffer. And I know that, you know, my struggles and the suffering that I've gone through has been different, but yoga has really helped that in a tremendous way. So my question is, just because I have that desire and that compassion and I think, oh, this is a great idea like to help these girls. What makes your actual destiny and your actual purpose different from a desire that you're having in the moment? You know what I mean? Like, I, I would say it's a matter of feeling. So you can, if you're aware enough, through yoga or meditation you can feel when your desire does not match your higher good or what you just called your destiny or mm -hmm. your calling or your path it's like um, a record needle that can that is skipping when it's not in the groove Mm -hmm. So I think a lot about too, and, and I'm trying to remember my teachings because, you know, I follow Abraham Hicks very closely. And what they say is, you know, essentially we don't all come here with like this, you know, this blueprint saying, you know, you're meant to do this specific thing. Really what we're supposed to be doing here is finding joy. And when we find joy, no matter what it is that we're doing, that's the thing. 
It could be a million different things, but if it brings you pure joy, that is right for you. Right. That's the feeling. And right. so that's the difference between doing something out of ego mm. because you're trying to serve yourself or trying to serve something that you think you should be, whereas you're doing it purely because not only are you bringing joy to others through what you're doing, but you're also feeling it yourself. It's a, it's a mutually beneficial so then you can drop out the, oh, is this my ego talking? It's okay for the ego to feel good as long as it doesn't get out of control. So when you're doing the work that you love and that you're passionate about and people are responding to that and you're affecting change, then there's this harmony where the, the ego becomes sort of unnecessary. Or it, it, well, it's not even that I'm trying to talk about ego right now. Yeah, I know. I dropped that in. It's just... So, you, I'm, I'm saying, like, there's this passion or this compassion that I'm feeling for these girls. And I've thought about working in a prison before. Like, before I was this deep into yoga. Mm -hmm. is when I discovered yoga, and I was like, this is the shit, years ago. The first thing that came to mind was, I would like to do this in prisons. So the fact that it's coming up again is very interesting. And I think that's what's interesting me is that why is there such a desire to work in these prisons? Just, and maybe because it's coming up again years later, maybe it's something that I should be considering. Well, what is it about prisons? I mean, specifically, you're talking about juvenile I mean, females, in this case, right? female juvenile, because that's what I'm currently <laughs> watching. You know, maybe, you know, right. that's just what's on my mind right now, because that's the current thing that I'm watching. It seems like the most likely place for you to enter in, right. if you were going to Right, to right. And I, you know me, I've, I've been thinking about working with kids for a very long time. And, and the ways that I've tried to work with kids in the past, like the, the, the girl life facilitator, yeah. like the girls empowerment thing... I wasn't really feeling that. Like, I loved the idea of working with little girls like that, but <clears throat> the troubled young people are, are where my my where my heart feels um, the most pulled. Towards. Right. Well, like, and and they're the ones that need it the most. And there's a sort of it seems like an underlying confidence in you, where you just feel quite strongly that you could affect change in those girls there's almost like a magnet pulling yeah. you because you know you're capable of it well too you know there are so many and i just feel like some those girls are the forgotten ones too you know what i mean like so many coaches and healers and teachers they want to work with the little girls who are happy and fun and excited and they're like yeah let's empower these girls and make them feel good about themselves and teach them that they can do whatever they want and that's the, those are the no, i don't want to say those are that's the easy route or those are the easy girls or know, you know right? but they're the most fun and the most pleasant and the most bubbly and exciting and you know that if you influence them they're going to take what you said and run with it and they're going to make a difference but what about the ones that are really difficult and and really angry and really hopeless well and then what you find is when you work with those angry hopeless ones you'll find that a few or many of them are easier to turn into those girls you just described like some all they need is that little push or that one person well but you know it's and i'm thinking about it too like it's it's i'm thinking about the ego here now that we're going back full circle to the ego like I'm, I'm really trying to define this year what is driving me more my ego or my heart and in this case it's it's feeling more like my heart not not and i am not saying that i want to go in there and say okay i'm going to change these girls it's not about changing them it's about me going in there hoping that they see somebody who cares this is bringing up a lot of emotion in you. Where is this coming from? I'm not sure. You know, just... Because I'm watching these girls and it's it sounds silly to get so emotional over this show, but this is like their real life, you know? And Does it remind you of experiences in your own life? What, I mean, like, not... Is, I, mean, I had a good life. I had a good childhood. If people cared about me. I went to a good school. I did halfway decent. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Um, I don't know. I, I wonder if it's just, you know, seeing how lucky I am and seeing how lucky Devin is and how 
thank God she has everything that she needs and she has a family that loves her and supports her and she's in an amazing neighborhood and an amazing school and she's going to get an amazing education and these a lot of these girls were born into a situation where Devin's blessings are not possible for them. Right. That makes me sad. I mean, this idea to uh, teach into prisons, <clears throat> how should I say this, is just the latest in a series of possible paths that you have been exploring like this whole time I mean even since our last podcast which I don't remember exactly when it was but I mean it was at least a year ago yeah right wow yeah and this would be episode 34 the last one you were on was episode 22 at that time I think <clears throat> you were just starting or just about to start the new job at Eagle Rock mm. right you yeah. <clears throat> hadn't been doing your morning meditations that came somewhere afterward the last year for you has been an incredible year of growth it's almost like I, I would like to trace that path mm. and I, I'm not even sure where it where it starts, but maybe it starts with you working at Eagle Rock, or does it start with you during your your morning meditations? What, do you, what the morning meditations when? Well, when did you start doing them every morning? I want to say summer ish. Right, that sounds about right. Um, bec and that's around the time I started Eagle Rock. That's an interesting concept because when I went to Eagle Rock I was much happier obviously mm -hmm. as I hated my last job and this one was has caused a lot more happiness or the result of working in this place has been happiness and, and restored my passion for animals and people to be honest. Once you learned how to change gears from that emergency Mindset, Right, in the toxic environment, you know. The, mm. the environment at my previous hospital was very, very, very toxic. And, um, uh, yeah, and, you know, switching gears again to Eagle Rock. Not, and I don't know that it's only because it's a general practice and it's less stressful and less busy and hectic and way less people. Uh, but it's also way less toxic. Um and yeah, I don't know if something just opened up for me to want to practice again. or It's not that the desire to practice wasn't there at Westfield. It was, but I think my stress and anxiety level um, overthrew my desire to practice. You know, the I was just... The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak yeah. sort of thing. And I did practice intermittently, it's, <clears throat> but I went really deep into my practice when I went to Eagle Rock. Yes, now... And... and that elimination of stress based on work that started to have a ripple effect mm -hmm. to everything mm -hmm. your, your mood at home you know at the way we communicate with each other there's just a lot less external stress bleeding into but tell me about your morning meditations um, in the summer in the summer and oh, just now. continuing oh. well they have changed I know but yeah so I guess just give a good did, Take us through the routine. So I got a scholarship <clears throat> to the Aquarian Women's Leadership Society with Guru Jagat and her line of teachers, Kundalini teachers. And when I got that scholarship, I knew that I manifested that opportunity because I really wanted it and I really visualized receiving it and you know I believe very much in the law of attraction and at that time I was really getting deep into Abraham Hicks teachings and trying to use the law of attraction so when I manifested or co-created that opportunity I was fully committed because I knew I wanted it there it was in my face so I have to do something with this instead of letting it just be this thing and like you know how I can be I'll, I'll get I'll, I'll get really excited about something and I won't go all in or I will go all in it's one or the other yes. it's all or nothing with me and for this I wanted it to be all 
And so I started, you know, exploring the Leadership Society. Um, and what it is, is every new moon cycle, Guru Jagat puts out new moon content. So it go, it's, it's all about the lunar cycle. So we would get a, a practice, a meditation, um, like a, a free lecture because you know her Guru Jagat's teachings are obviously in person yes but for the people who are in California with her or traveling with her she puts all of her teachings on her virtual um, community which is great because I do most of my practice from home as you know so for her to put all that out there on the internet is, is very accessible to us so she'll gift us with a, a really long lecture in the within the leadership society some recipes um monthly calls with i think there's four monthly calls or something with with her and her other teachers um a workshop is included in there so basically it is all about the 40 day well not really the 40 day but basically so she's giving out this content and you're ideally supposed to pr do the practice and the meditation daily for 40 days. Even if the content, the new content comes out before 40 days, you're encouraged to continue for the 40 days, as you know. But um, the Aquarian Women's Leadership Society is really about, you know, that we're in the Aquarian age right now. We went from Piscean to Aquarian, and this is the age of information essentially and the age of awareness as kundalini is the yoga of awareness so you know these teachings are teaching you how to be a leader in this age of the aquarian instead of the piscean age where we were focused on hierarchy and control we're now focused on unity and want and love and um equality essentially and and women as you know yogi bhajan loved and uh taught that women are the future essentially but in a spiritual and yogic way right. and so she's really doing the women's empowerment thing from a spiritual standpoint and teaching us to kind of step into our power and um it, when i joined the leadership society it really changed my practice because i knew that i wanted to practice daily now and uh i did and I made a lot of new friends, and I, I don't know. I don't know how to explain it. I, I can't really say what shifted. Yeah, and it's hard to articulate to a listener, especially because it was, I always say, like when I started doing my meditations, the shift was so subtle mm -hmm. that it, it, it just creeps up on you. It's like so subtle to you for it's it's so subtle that you can't explain it but it's so profound mm -hmm. that you can't explain it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if that makes any sense right. whatsoever. But so let's go into a little bit of detail. So you were let's say at the peak when you were really on. You were getting up I was getting up at 3:45 a.m. taking a cold shower for as long as I could, maybe five or six minutes. Explain the benefits of the cold shower. So the cold shower is supposed to be a daily practice. I mean, and then they say the colder the water, the better. And what it's supposed to do is replenish the red blood cells in the body. So it brings all the, you know, we, we red blood cells are dying and re being reborn within us constantly. Mm-hmm. And when we take a cold shower, we're bringing all of the new red blood cells that are being reborn within us to the surface. So that means that it is helping this our, with our circulation. It is bringing beautiful brand new blood flow to our organs, to our heart, to our skin. Um, it's It helps uh, boost the immune system, which is obviously very important, especially this time of year. Mm -hmm. um, it really re-energizes you and gets you prepared for the long practice which uh, you know if you're practicing uh, the typical two and a half hours every morning before you do your yogi bhajan says you're supposed yogi bhajan says ideally 
you spend the first 10% of your day dedicated to God, mm. and then you can do whatever you want. You mm. can go to work. He says you can eat ice cream. You can go back to sleep. Who cares what you do after that 10%? But the first 10% of your day should be dedicated to God, wow. which is you. And, you know, so I was doing that for a, a few months, and, um, yeah. Well, it was incredible. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I'd get up in the morning. Oh, yeah, okay, yeah, I got and lost. It's okay. So, yeah. yeah, I would get up at 3.45, I would do the cold shower, and then I would sit and I would do my... Whatever was on the Leadership Society's content, I would do the practice, I would do their meditation, and then I had added my own sadhana um, practice and meditation, mostly a meditation and a practice. So I was doing... I, I can't remember the the content right now because it, mm -hmm. it's constantly changing, but my own personal sadhana, which is what I reincorporate into my recent sadhana right now, is auric projection, um, ego eradicator, and and a meditation. So the, 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 the auric projection is something that I've been trying to do every day, and I don't want to use it as a 40-day. I want to use it as an every day, every day, mm. no matter what. Like, I want my non-negotiables. Mm. So it doesn't matter what time I do them. Ideally in the morning, of course, but... As long as you do As long them. as I do them, I would like my non-negotiables to be auric projection, Ego Eradicator and Sat Kriya, at least. Mm -hmm. And I mean, now I'm going to add those two other ones, Kirtan Kriya and Sudarshan Chakra Kriya, which I'm still learning about. And you know, it's funny because sometimes people are like, well, what's that meditation for? And while I could read you the description of the meditation, what I'm learning now in my practice recently is, yes, Yogi Bhajan gave us descriptions of these meditations, and they are beautiful descriptions. I mean, reading some of these some of his words about these meditations in Korea brings me to tears just reading what they can do for you and yeah. reading how how he talks about God and, and, and you but it it's really about doing the practice because you can be you're doing a JLA and you've been doing it for 120 days and it's having whatever it is having whatever effect it's having Profound. on you but for me it would have a different effect mm -hmm. because I'm a completely different person with a completely different background with a completely different quote unquote destiny you know what I'm saying so I'm learning to just okay I'm going to read the descriptions because the descriptions are what's going to attract me to the meditation so that I know this is what I need right now, mm -hmm. but then letting go of that word for word description and just letting the meditation or the career work for just me. Do, yeah, just doing it. Yeah. Right. <clears throat> um, so, yeah. And then, so you get out of it for a little bit. Consistency so, is always. Yeah, well, what word. happened was winter came mm. and I was really upset because I, I was getting cold and I could not, like, get myself to take a cold shower in the morning because it was just first of all cold shower is uncomfortable whether you do it in the summer the spring the fall or the winter sure but i swear by well it now. sure i, I mean in the summer it's it. much easier because you wake up and you're hot already essentially yeah and you're like okay this is gonna feel good it's a little uncomfortable at first but you know eventually it's gonna feel great but in the winter it's not so fun no because you're already in at least in our case <laughs> we're waking up kind of chilly mm -hmm. and then we're gonna go into an even colder shower like that's really tough for me and the yoga way is you go straight in into freezing straight cold. ice cold that's yeah. it you just go straight in. but you're supposed that... to go in slowly <laughs> you know hands first feet you know i also wanted to say the other benefit of the ice cold, you know, because they do it in cry, they do the cryotherapy too, and it releases norepinephrine, which it's a survival mechanism, mm -hmm. but it's what it uh, reduces inflammation oh, in the right. body. As oh well. my god, that's yes, a big that's one. a huge one. That's mm -hmm. another reason I actually started doing it because my knees mm -hmm. and my back. I mean, mostly my knees, but well, and then of and course, it really helped all the diseases and 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 problems that are associated with inflammation. They all go back to that. So. Right. Right. Yeah. But anyway. Yeah. So winter really was a setback for me and I, I'm not going to blame winter I'm, I'm, I, I'm also not going to blame myself but I, I know that's the factor yeah. <laughs> that caught that I I chose to stop taking cold showers <laughs> because I was too cold mm. um, and then that kind of led me to not completely stop practicing but to go on a little break and now that I'm talking about it and remembering uh, I realized that it was also my ego 
was too in my too much in my practice. I remember that. Yes. And I had a really good talk with a, a really good friend of mine from the from class. Jared the Gong. Jacob. Jacob. I said Jared. Jacob. <laughs> Jacob and. Um, the Gong guy. I think what happened was you and I had a a really big fight, and I reached out to Jacob about it. But not with, you know, just briefly, like, I, I don't know if I explained to him what was going on, but somehow we got into talking about the practice. And I realized that I was trying too hard to get the practice to do for me what it says it was going to do. And I was just too invested in the results. Mm. And Jacob kind of had me realize that, you know, letting the practice work for me was the best bet. And not even just saying, okay, let the practice work for you, but surrender to your practice. You know, just let it go. Just sit there and say, God, do for me what you think it should be done and let that go because I don't know what's best for me. Right. God knows what's best for me and that is it. Nobody knows. We don't know what's best for ourselves. We have no fucking clue. You know, we think we want this or we want that or we know what feels good, but we really have no clue. And, and that kind of... What Jacob said, you know, it was obviously a lot deeper than that. <laughs> I'm not giving it justice, but... Yeah really put things into perspective for me and I said to myself I'm going to um, take a break from my practice without feeling guilty for it Um, because a lot of times when I would practice so hardcore and then stop I would feel immense guilt Hmm. like what you know just beating myself up like I'm not being consistent I have I do have consistency issues I'll be honest but you know I would take that to the next level with my practice and just beat myself up about it and say you know if you don't practice tomorrow you're not committed or whatever like I'm really hard on myself um so honestly Jacob's conversation gave me permission to just take a little break and I stopped not that I stopped going to class completely I would still go Mm-hmm. every week or whatever it was for a while but I wasn't really hardcore about it right. in the mornings anymore and I had to be okay with that and I used that time to reevaluate what I wanted what I didn't want or you know how I wanted to approach my practice and my growth and the reality is I'm a, not addicted to growth but in a sense I, I just love to grow I love to know that I'm growing it makes me feel good you know, I don't want to stay the same. I want to grow. You sure. know, that's to me, life is all about the growth. Well, stagnation you either grow doesn't or you feel die. good. Stag- yes, you grow or you die. And stagnation does not feel good. It doesn't feel, feel good. good to me, no. Right. And so I, I took that break. And then the new year came around. And, uh, you know, I, I'm, I also kept going to workshops because, as you know, I love me some workshops. Mm-hmm. Um, workshops are, are just very important to me and so I committed to doing a couple of New Year's workshops and on New Year's Day I went to a workshop uh, at a Kundalini studio in Westfield it was for you know the new year abundance prosperity for the new year and um, before that I decided to you know how everybody has New Year's resolutions I'm gonna work out I'm not gonna eat sugar I'm gonna whatever it is you know and I'm not necessarily a believer in resolutions but I decided to focus on surrender Mm -hmm. for 2019 uh, letting go of the idea that my path is going to be a certain way letting go of the um, constantly reaching for a better career you know because again I'm not miserable in the hospital I'm at now. I enjoy it. And so there's no reason for me to go out seeking something, quote unquote, better. And again, I'm just holding on to the idea that God knows what's best for me. And if I just let him show me the way and follow his lead, but following it, like he could show me all day and I could either just be like, hey, I see that or I could go with it. And I'm choosing to let him show me and then going with it. And I really do believe that I could just sit here and do nothing all day and simply surrender. And the moment I walk outside, I'm going to see something that's yes. going to show me I need to go there. Right. And so I'm, I'm, I'm going with that. And I'm doing that with my practice also. So on New Year's Day, we had practiced this meditation called Ardas Bahi. And it is essentially your prayers are already answered. And before you could even pray for it you know God is giving you what you need um, and apparently Guru Amar Das this is part of the meditation you give the prayer to Guru Amar Das and Guru Ram Das 
is the miracle maker and mm. he will bring it to fruition. So what I'm doing when I do this meditation is I'm just allowing them to give it to me, give me whatever it is, <laughs> you mm. know, and I don't have to know what it is. Mm -hmm. And that feels right for me. And I, I think it's very interesting that I decided to use this year as the year of letting go. And, and then that meditation is the first meditation of the year. I All thought right. that was very interesting. So there you go. Synchronicity proves that for me, this was the right decision. So it's only what, what's today's date? The 12th. So, you know, I've been meditating on that for the last 12 days <clears throat> every day whether I do it in the morning or at night it's become a part of my routine where I, I'm like you now like I can't go the day without doing this meditation mm -hmm. like it just it's a part of my day it's like brushing my teeth it yes. has to be done has at to some be done. point right. um, you know and then my non-negotiables are in there as well but um, for me when I do this particular meditation it's, it's very devotional uh, for me it's, it's that time with God and myself that's very important. Now, talking about surrendering this year compared to last year, because one of the other things that was like a mini side mission for you was this whole Pet Partners plan that you had. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah. We're going to have to edit out the names. Okay. Um... So the pet partners thing was to do leadership coaching with that big corporation. And they own, I think, somewhere around like 90 hospitals or something in the United States. I thought it was way over 2,000, but for some reason I got that really confused. I don't know where that number came from. And they're based out of their main offices? They're up are... in upstate New York. Right. Um, so they had me come in and so and it well, yeah okay, let's start so, start at the beginning so, so i started you went at to a eagle, workshop i started at wait what you were at eagle rock oh and they yeah. sent you to a workshop right right so you know i i would talk to some of the doctors about my leadership coaching and how i wanted to use this in the vet field and one of the doctors suggested that I start looking into the corporation that owns our hospital to do some leadership coaching with them. Uh, and so I guess one of the doctors emailed corporate about me and they suggested that I go to one of their leadership three-day workshops. There we go. So I followed through with that. I went to the three-day workshop and the director of operations came into one of the classes and said something to the effect of, you know, if any of you are interested in growth opportunities, hello, hmm. of course, email me. And, I, you know, I probably emailed her within the hour because I, I just saw an opportunity and I jumped on it. And after that leadership, the, that three-day leadership workshop, um, I, I saw that the corporation's idea of leadership and my idea of leadership were very similar, uh, very innovative, and you know it just looked like a really fun, cool company to work with. Mm -hmm. And I saw that if you know me being a, a, a aspiring entrepreneur, you know working full time, being a mom is really really hard to build your own business. You know, at least for me, I sure. found it very difficult. Oh yeah, of course. So I thought at the time, use, you know, working with a corporation in that sense would be a really good idea for me. I wouldn't have to worry about building my own business and, you know, uh, doing it that way. Mm -hmm. That was just too overwhelming for me to even consider. So I followed through with this woman after the, the workshops and she ended up having me. It was a long time. It took a long time of like planning and negotiating and all this stuff. But eventually they got me in there to train some of their leaders on energy leadership and the stuff that I learned in coaching school. And the anxiety leading up to that moment was the worst I mean, it was painful. Like, my stomach, like, the stress colitis is real. <laughs> <laughs> and um, so I did the training with them, and it, it was about a two-and-a-half-hour training, and it went very well. I, I really stepped into my um, teaching role, mm -hmm. and I really loved it. And I'm on fire, I'm telling you. I, was, I did a really great job, not because of the skills I've learned over the years, but because I felt 
in the right place. I enjoyed what I was doing. I enjoyed interacting, engaging, and I really enjoyed the teaching aspect of it. And it was so much fun. I would also add that you knew your shit as well. Yeah, and that helped, of course. Of course. Well, it (laughs) does. That helped, of course, yeah. Yeah. Um, So anyway, uh, that went great. And I followed up with the lady a couple weeks later. And, you know, that this particular corporation is revamping their entire leadership um, approach and just right. redesigning all of their trainings and stuff like that. And so for the next six months, it's everything for them is going to be on hold. And I was a little disappointed, of course, but at the same time, I s- really believe that if it's meant for me to work with them, they will contact me again when the time is right. And if they don't, then duh, it's just not <laughs> Well, do you think that me. maybe you would just keep in touch with them, like yeah. drop them a line yeah, to remind them. Yeah, I will, them. but I I don't want to be the annoying. Sure. Um, that that annoying person. You know, sure. I I know that there's a line there, yeah. and I know that they're very busy. But she told me to. She said, please keep in touch with me. And the thing is, I have an extra assessment, um, an energy leadership index assessment to share with her and she knows this and I was going to contact her after the new year anyway and say hey you know I still have this assessment if you're still interested in a free assessment and debrief we can do this now that the new year is up and so that'll be my my in with her just to kind of catch up and and also provide her with my services that you know she could use she's a leader herself I'm sure she's interested in you know how she shows up as a leader and how she can grow and I can give that to her for for free you know because I have this extra one because somebody didn't show up for the workshop itself so I I would like to gift that to her because unfortunately she wasn't able to make the training and she's very interested in it too so I feel really good about being able to give that to her at you know no charge because I just have it and there's no reason for me to charge her for it so I would like to do that for her because she's helped me a lot so that's the least I could do and the idea behind all of this is you know, you would go around to different hospitals that have toxic working environments or even toxic employees. Not even, you know, I mean, see, I think I have a, a this this in, in desire to, you know, you know, we were talking about the girls incarcerated and now toxic work environments. Right, exactly. Like, there's That's a what pattern I, there's, there. There is. There's, there are connections. <laughs> huh. There are connections. Yeah, yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, Yeah, so I mean, ideally, because I've worked in very toxic environments, I would ideally love to help those environments become less toxic and more uh, engaging and and a a more enjoyable place for people to work. Yes, uh, but I also have a desire to help leaders who just want to be better leaders and they want to grow and, you know, maybe get a promotion or just be better at what they do, you know, and become more aware and, and, and more emotionally intelligent and Um, better communicators you know I do have a desire to do that too and I feel that in this case uh, working with the people that want to be coached and want to become better that's where I would like to ideally be because it I've I just in this field in particular I don't know if I want to deal with the toxic people who have no desire in growing okay right yes I see what you're you saying. know I've yeah. done that already yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen the resistance mm-hmm. from people in this field they don't want to change They're very combative, and they think that their way is the best way, and they don't want to change, and they can't fathom a better way than their own idea of what things are supposed to be like. So, and and that triggers me, obviously, because I've been in this field for a very long time. How many life coaches does it take to change a light bulb? (laughs) Only one, but Mm -hmm. the light bulb has to want to change. Exactly. Can I shift gears? Mm -hmm. Um, Guru Jagat. Mm -hmm and the women's empowerment and yoga. I thought it would be important to know also that her, what do we say, husband, partner? I don't think they're married. John. I haven't even heard anything about them in a really long time. After his daughter died, I haven't heard mm. anything from her about him. I don't know if she's just giving him his space or, you know, maybe this is gossip, you know what I'm saying? I want to know mm. how they're doing, but she hasn't mentioned him. Right. John Wineland, right? Yeah. And they do a lot of talks and workshops mm-hmm. about relationships mm. which i found very valuable I, I enjoy watching him come at it from the male perspective mm. and what men need um and going back again abraham hicks law of attraction you were deep into studying can you tell us a little bit about the law of attraction aside from the surface of what people might know of the secret mm. <laughs> but it's so much more than that 
Or is that too much for right now? Well, you know, and I'm going to speak of it from the, the obviously the way that I understand it, and I'm going to speak f- about it for the way that it's worked for me. Well, that's exactly my, what I'd like you to do. My understanding of the law of attraction is that it's a lot more simple than everybody makes it out to be. You know, people think that we need to do, do, do all these things and make, do, do it a certain way when it really is just as simple as your beliefs are creating your reality and joy is the way to go all the time it's really that simple if you want to manifest let's say you know because this is kind of the things that people want (laughs) a brand new car or a brand new house or a, a something some material object all you have to do really is think about that thing and find the script that you can create in your mind that brings you joy and happiness and excitement and do that as much as possible it's daydreaming this was the big um takeaway for me from that was uh you have to feel the feeling yes so if you want the brand new car and you don't feel the kind of joy you would feel having that car if you thought i want this brand new car i would feel great but oh i don't have enough money or it's going to be difficult to get Mm -hmm. you're not feeling it so you're not going to attract it. the moment that you feel the joy of the thing that's when the universe says i'm bringing that thing into their reality because the universe doesn't know that you don't already have it The universe only knows that feeling of joy. So the law is, if you feel that feeling of joy, the universe has to bring it to your reality. Because the universe is joy and love and excitement. That's what it is. And And you're matching that vibration. Therefore, it's going to make its way into your vortex. Well, you jumped on the word, the vibration. Because this is where Anthony would jump in. He said, well, that's because it's vibration. And everything is just energy and vibrational patterns. And you have this pattern interacting with this pattern. It's really not that complicated. (laughs) It's not that complicated. It's very, very simple. So when I was a kid, people used to tell me to stop daydreaming so much. And I kind (laughs) of was like... F off because this makes me feel good. Whether I have the thing I'm daydreaming about or not doesn't matter because it's making me feel good. So when you say it's not that complicated, could it be, is it something that could or should be taught? Absolutely. At a young age, I like this is definitely the, think so. The, oh my god! A lot of pe- a lot of people's adult issues could be. And, and really, you don't have to teach the law of attraction to people as the law of attraction. You right. teach them the art of finding joy as much as possible. Right. You know, and it, it's really just about changing your beliefs about something. It, you know, I mean, for adults, it's really hard because we're some of us are stuck in this pattern of, you know, I don't have enough money. Therefore, how could I imagine getting this thing when I don't believe that I'll ever have the money to get it? Like let go of the I, I'll never have the, the the money to get it and just focus on the daydreaming about actually feeling like you will have this thing and then you will find the money to get it. Well, it, that's, it is law. That's Mike. That's Mike Dooley's take on on the law of attraction is uh, don't worry about the cursed. It's ten thirty two. Don't worry about the cursed howls. Right. Just visualize yes. the end result. And I did this in a mini way with our apartment. And mm-hmm. when Ray sold it, mm-hmm. we didn't know if who the new landlords were going to be or if they were going to let us stay. And there was a real possibility we were going to have to look for a place. Oh, my God, taking Devin out of school. But this, in that entire time, all through the summer up until, what, a few weeks ago, all I did was visualize the end result. Feeling good, being in this place, and knowing we get to stay here. Mm-hmm. And I didn't worry about anything else about looking for a place or or the who the land none of it and it worked out exactly mm-hmm. like i'm we're in what i was visualizing right. we're here mm-hmm. the landlords are nice they're letting us stay mm-hmm. and another aspect is you know when you are not feeling good about something like let's say my job for instance at the other hospital when you realize what you don't want you can start focusing on what you do want Mm. instead of saying this sucks this sucks i don't want this i want something better because this sucks i want something better because i'm 
upset and I hate these people or I hate this job because this is a toxic environment. Like you can easily get caught up in focusing on what you don't want. So as soon as you realize this is a situation that I don't want, switch your thoughts to what you do want only, Mm. only. Mm. Okay. Because what you don't want is obvious. Okay. I'm here and I don't want this. Focusing on that is going to keep you in that situation. Switching gears saying, okay, I know what I don't want. What is it that I want? I want to work at a hospital that is beautiful, very well kept. I want to work at a hospital that's close to home. I want to work at a hospital with a better environment, with less stress, no emergencies. And I was just focusing on that. This, that's what I want. And then all of a sudden, I realized there's a hospital right up the street from us, yeah. which we've passed for two years. Uh-huh. And I said, you know what, I'm just going to send in my resume. They didn't respond to me for a couple of weeks. So I said, forget, I'm going to bring my resume in person. I was <laughs> determined at this point. What, just like you did with uh, the pet partners, right. where you sent the email. Right. You're the one that sent the email in the first place and got that whole thing. Right. The whole Something was telling me that I need to take another step in that direction. Mm. So when I dropped off my resume to Eagle Rock, Dr. Miller was like, oh, crap, I never responded to this girl. Now she's standing in my hospital. So he took me for a two-hour interview right then and there and hired me on the spot. Mm -hmm. So I know that I manifested that. You know, obviously the hospital has always been there. and But when you release the block of, I don't want to do this anymore, I hate this hospital, I'm you're keeping yourself in that vibration of disdain. Yeah, because for your you're focusing position. on the what is. Right. Rather you, than yes, the... that's exactly the point. Oh my God, that's exactly what Abraham Hicks talks about. Stop focusing on what is, because the reality of what you're seeing in front of you right now does not matter. What matters is what you want. Right. Focus on the want. Because the want, that that other reality, that joyous reality, that also is. Exists. But it also <laughs> exists. Yes. yes exactly. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Exactly. And it's it's just a matter of changing because a thought creates a belief, which creates your reality. Mm-hmm. So, you know, people, a lot of people say positive affirmations don't work or it takes a long time for them to work. So people are starting to like poo poo positive affirmations now and use other teachings, which I understand, but they're not understanding the thoughts lead to beliefs lead to uh, reality. They're not understanding that concept. So, yeah, the positive affirmation is going to take a really long time because you believe the opposite of I am love. Mm -hmm. You know, you believe the opposite of I am prosperous. And, and when you say the the, 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 um, the positive affirmations, it's like you're doing it as homework, but you're not yes. really But engaged. it's okay if you don't believe it right now. You For, still have to keep you doing still have it to keep because doing the, it. the belief is so ingrained because of the thoughts you've been thinking for so many years. Mm-hmm. All you're doing is replacing your awful thoughts with I am prosperous. Just think about it and say it to yourself as much as you possibly can and eventually you'll believe it and in the meantime fake it until you make it fake it it until you make it Yogi Bhajan even said it Mm -hmm. all the great teachers that knew what they were talking about say crazy shit like that fake it till you make it you know like that sounds so silly and crazy and like that'll never work but it it does work it does work yeah you know Mm -hmm. because when you were little something told you maybe a parent or, or your current situation that you're seeing told you that you weren't prosperous Right. So you kept thinking to yourself, we're poor. We're, this is my situation. Yes. We're poor. We're poor. We're poor. So I kept thinking it. Therefore, I kept seeing it. Therefore, up that, until recently, it's been my reality. And you told me in that case, that was like some offhand comment your dad made. He was using a little bit of hyperbole. Mm-hmm. I mean, you guys did struggle, but yeah. but just hearing that At from him. At a seven-year-old him, brain. You took that to heart. Yeah. Oh, my God. We're poor. Yep. We're, we're, oh, we're yeah. those people. Yep. And because I looked up to him, he had such an influence on me. That I believed him, mm-hmm. you know, and, and, you know, I think about that a lot when it comes to Devin. I read this quote once that said um, something to the effect of be the parent that your children or have the relationship, create the reality for your children that they don't have to heal from. Mm-hmm. So, you know, yes, I'm going to make a mistake as a parent, but and Devin's going to have experiences that cause her to, you know, uh, feel a certain way or believe a certain thing or whatever that she may need to heal from in the future, just like we all do. We're all healing at all the t- all the time if we choose to do so. But I want to create a reality for Devin where she doesn't have to heal wounds that I have caused. Mm. Do you know what I'm saying? Um, so I'm doing my best to 
not put those thoughts in her head, you know, or show her as much love and affection as possible. I'm thinking of my upbringing. I'm not saying that my parents weren't affectionate with me, but my parents worked their asses off all the time. Yeah. My dad had two jobs at a time. My mom always had two jobs at a time, I think, if I can remember correctly. You know, this is me as a five, six-year-old girl, whatever. But I, you know, my parents hugged me and kissed me and stuff like that, but they weren't overly, and again, I'm, I'm not, I don't want to be overly affectionate with Devin. I'm not saying that I have to constantly be on her, but I want to hug her every morning that she wakes up. I want to wake her up gently. I want to tell her the first thing she hears out of my mouth is, wake up baby I love you good morning right. like every single morning I want to hug her when she comes out of the school doors the first thing I want to do is hug her and kiss her on the head and tell her I love you I miss you I hope you had a good day those are the words that I want her to hear from me upon seeing me again for the first time after a few hours because yes. and of and seriously I've asked her before I said we do these like little questionnaire things you know in, in books that like what do you love most about this person or you know those little survey things yes yeah. And one time a question came up and it and I had asked her what is what have I what do you something like what do you love the most about your mom or what do you think about when you think about your mom like what's the first thing that comes to your head and her answer was every time she sees me she gives me a hug and a kiss wow and every time she wakes me up she gives me a hug and a wow. kiss that was her answer right and I didn't think that uh, anything of what I'm doing you know as as anything special it's just what I'm I like and, to but do that was when the I, thing she but that of. was the thing that she remembers yeah. and I don't want her to remember me as my mom never came to my games because she's always working my mom uh, always worked and she always had two jobs sure. you know I'm th and I'm not saying that my parents fucked up I'm saying that the first thing I think about from my childhood was okay I played baseball but, but my parents worked so much. Yes. That's the first thing that's coming to my head, you know? Mm -hmm. And I, I don't want the first thing coming to Devin's head to be my mom worked so much to keep us afloat or my mom was always working at night a second job because she had to yeah. or my dad said we we're poor. You know, I don't... Those are things that I have to heal from. Mm -hmm. And that's okay because they're creating and has cre have created who I am right now. I don't think my parents made any mistakes. I think they did everything that they were supposed to do and they've created all of us and the reality that we're in, and that's okay, you know? And I'm learning to heal from that because I'm supposed to teach people how to heal from that too. So that's why this, the healing that I'm doing is very important to me because I know that there are others that have to heal and I can show them how. The person you are now compared to the person I first met, <clears throat> I mean, they're the same, but they are also vastly, you emerged as if from a cocoon since when I first knew you. I knew you had to go soon, but when you talked about uh, saying this to Devin when you see her every few hours or mm. when she wakes up in the morning yeah. oh, and I'm every sorry. day. Well, I'm just, I'm, Going I'm back finding to parallels mm. between that and the positive affirmation, mm. the visualizing, mm -hmm. meditation and yoga, getting the benefits of the Kriya. There's a common thread between all of that. Mm. And it's, it's not just doing it. I've, I've, We've talked about this, mm -hmm. but it's the consistency. Consistency is very important. The consistency builds momentum, spiritual momentum. That's another thing that I wanted to talk about too. Is is and we could talk about this more when I come back from class. But the momentum is very important because there have been times where I have gotten really excited about something. Let's Devin's book is the prime example I want to touch on because uh. remember when I put her under hypnosis and she had this uh, the most incredible experience yes. we wanted to make a book out of this and we had all these ideas about making it a series and I have the illustrator and the mm -hmm. publisher and a, a week later it was like bam, dead ideas just stopped flowing and because we never took the baby steps towards the right. thing and that's when it doesn't mean that the thing <laughs> wasn't a good idea or the thing isn't meant to happen. It's that you just allowed the momentum to stop yeah. by not continuously taking little tiny itty bitty steps towards it. What that's you, all that happens. What you don't nurture won't grow. Exactly. And it, again, it's that simple. It doesn't like that's why there's so many people in the world that say I'm so confused about what I want to do because one day it seems like I want to do this and I'm so excited about it. But then the, a week and a half later, it's this thing and I'm so excited about it. But what did you do after that week? Towards that one little thing that made you excited. You didn't do anything. It doesn't mean that 
all these choices are not not the right choice. It just means that you didn't follow through on the the momentum. That's all it means. That follow through part intrigues me. Just where what that's about is it laziness? Is it a shorter attention span? Is I think it any a lot one of, of those it is, things is laziness. The overwhelmingness of digging into the work right, and actually doing do the, work the work because you have and you have to do it consistently. And you have to do it consistently. And a lot right. of us, you know. <sighs> Consistency is tough. What time is it? It is 10.44. I'm sorry. (laughs) Okay. So, I guess we're going to do a part two at some point soon okay then we will end this first part by reading desiderata by max ehrman 1952 am i supposed to start (laughs) (laughs) go placidly amid the noise and haste and remember what peace there may be in silence as far as possible without surrender be on good terms with all persons Speak your truth quietly and clearly, and listen to others. Even the dull and the ignorant, they too have their story. Avoid loud and aggressive persons. They are vexations to the spirit. If you compare yourself with others, you may become vain and bitter, for always there will be greater and lesser persons than yourself. Enjoy your achievements as well as your plans. Keep interested in your own career, however humble. It is a real possession in the changing fortunes of time. Exercise caution in your business affairs, for the world is full of trickery. But let this not blind you to what virtue there is. Many persons strive for high ideals. And everywhere, life is full of heroism. Be yourself, especially Do not feign affection. Neither be cynical about love, for in the face of all aridity and disenchantment, it is as perennial as the grass. Take kindly the counsel of the years, gracefully surrendering the things of youth. Nurture strength of spirit to shield you in sudden misfortune. But do not distress yourself with dark imaginings. Many fears are born of fatigue and loneliness. Beyond a wholesome discipline, be gentle with yourself. You are a child of the universe, no less than the trees and the stars. You have a right to be here. And whether or not it is clear to you, no doubt the universe is unfolding as it should. Therefore, be at peace with God, whatever you conceive him to be. And whatever your labors and aspirations, in the noisy confusions of life, keep peace within your soul. With all its sham, drudgery, and broken dreams, it is still a beautiful world. Be cheerful. Strive to be happy. stuff that's right <laughs> so now let's let's cover the unimportant stuff it's a microcosm of all of the pain of the united states oh you see uh get in his mood we, we left out off on, on a specific thought thread you know you don't remember where we ended it huh? i'm not sure i remember what i did yesterday no <laughs> <laughs> When you're in the moment, there's only this moment. I guess tune in next time when I have some interesting shit to talk about. Other than that, I love you. I love the world. Peace out. This is 
sir. I, I avoid responsibility. That way nobody feels compelled to put me in a position of power. Be excited. You know, because now it's here. A shiny gift of a lesson that you have in front of you. And now you know. You have to work through it. You really have to, well, if you want to and you're tired of it, you have to work through it. Why, why not and give yourself, I would call it a dose of real reality. I mean, like where nothing makes sense, but everything works. Let's be real. None of this is real. You, you I feel like I'm telling a story. What's your advice for people in life? My, my advice is to stay strong, be helpful, be smart, be brave, be powerful, be kind, and be loving to everyone, even your pets. People are like, oh, I would get, wouldn't you get lonely when all your loved one dies? I'm like, no, you get new loved ones. You know, we really don't know what's, what's, what's in store for us. We really don't know. Uh, well, would you want to know? Well, no. No. Let's say something bad happened to you. Move on. It already happened. Just move on to the better things in life. I hope it's really not just us. <laughs> right? And everyone else is like, self-create eternal hell. No. Every, every waking moment is a joyous experience of growth and opportunity. I find myself totally spiritual centered and at peace with the balance between me and the rest of the universe. We can't believe we're good at what we do, because if we believe that, then we'll stop doing it. And more than that, we'll stop growing. One heck of time! <laughs> Amen to that, my brother. Marcus, own the day, own your life. It's such a game changer. After all that, they won the game. I know why you chose me to do the yellow parts, because yours have bigger words and you knew I would stumble over them. That's <laughs> only true. It's all... God damn it. I see what you did there. No. That's only true on one stanza. The rest, it was just because I felt like it sounded like... Mm -hmm. It sounded like that, that would be the advice you would give. Notice the parts I chose were more like negative ones. Neither be cynical about love. That's something that I, that, that I have to remember. Mm. I thought you were, when, when you came to this stanza uh, yes, right here, that's I was like, I'm going to laugh because that makes me think of perianal. Yes, right. <laughs> <laughs> and I that, giggle. <laughs> that specific line originally was you, and then I did change it for that very reason. So you got me, yes. For in the face of all aridity and disenchantment, yep, I would have screwed that one up it is time. as perennial as the ground. Because I'm a, I'm a fast reader. I rush sometimes through reading. Mm. That's why I, that's what, something I have to be very careful about. And you <clears throat> met, and you changed this last. I did. Yeah, I changed you did. it. Yeah, you you said in the noisy confusions of life, keep uh, peace within your soul. There's more than one confusion. <laughs> this is the land of confusion. Therefore, <laughs> that was is... a Freudian for for Freud. Freudian. Freudian slip. It never ends. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. See you next time. Maybe.